who didn't know and, and couldn't see, don't, don't miss the fact that that was a mother and two daughters who just shared with you this morning. Um, if you ever want to know what God is, is doing back behind the doors, behind this room, there, there's a glimpse right there. Um, mothers, the sermon this morning, everything about this morning is, is all, about, all about you and your role and, and what you do and who you are and who you touch and how you show God. This is a Mother's Day sermon. So, husbands, if at this point you're realizing that it's Mother's Day for the first time, you can cough twice, we'll create a diversion, and you can go rob the preschool arts and crafts back there, and we'll, we'll get it figured out. Um, Mothers are a gift from God, and we, we say that, we see it on Hallmark cards, we, we, we hear it, we try to convey it, but guys, that's a biblical truth. It is a biblical truth that mothers are a gift from God, and mothers, if you don't hear a single other thing that I say the rest of this morning, which is fine, but if you hear nothing else, hear that your importance cannot be overstated. Your importance to your husband raising your children, uh, the encouraging and supporting of other mothers, uh, your direct impact on the kingdom of God and how you display God to the world simply cannot be overstated. We know, as Paul says in Galatians 3.28, that there is neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, man nor woman, because we are all one in Christ. It, it, it's under this overshadowing umbrella of unity. Not uniformity, we are very different, but under unity. And we get that God is spirit, John 4.24, among lots of other examples in there. Uh, and so we know that when we talk about made in his image, we're not talking about physical attributes. Uh, we're not making anatomical distinctions. We're talking about character, about programming, about souls. Uh, so just remember that m mothers, ladies, in addition to everything else, not, not only are you fearfully and wonderfully made, not only are you uniquely and differently made, but you are made in the image of God, and that is not something to ever be taken lightly. If we start this morning... In Genesis, uh, Genesis 1, 26 and 27, it says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish and the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind. He created humans in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Mothers, what you do values so much to God. God sees so much importance in it and value in it that oftentimes throughout Scripture, when God is trying to, when God is trying to display his ability to comfort when God is trying to show his ability to protect, to love unconditionally, he calls upon imagery that only mothers can provide. And so this morning we're going to look at a few of these. Let's see if I can get my slideshow to work here. This is my mom. My mom, uh, this is her senior picture from high school. She graduated here in Oak Ridge in, in 1965. The same full year that they had the Mustang came out, and my grandmother found that to never be a coincidence. Um, notice I said God uses these examples to comfort, love, protect, and defend. But another time that a mother's imagery works really well is just when you really need to rake someone over the coals. Uh, and I remember reading through Scripture when I was younger, one of the very first times that I noticed... God using this feminine imagery was in uh, Job. 
Job chapter 38. If you remember, this is the chapter that is really hard to read because Job has gone through this time where he is, he is saying he is, he is righteous. He's a righteous man and that God is being unfair and that God owes Job an explanation and God shows up to give it. Um, and in Job 38, God, God, God gives this long and painful divine diatribe to Job. And he says, um, in a long list of examples, he says, remind me again, from whose womb comes the ice? Who gives birth to the frost from the heavens? <laughs> me, not you. And that... And I was, I was thinking about titles for these different imagery, and as it is May, anyone with children from about age 5 through 17, um, May is the, it's been a long year, and your child's stock is falling quickly, and school is quickly becoming old for yourself. This is one of those imageries, and it's also um, this one, uh, which we've all got and seen, and I think that is a very apt face. Um, but seriously, let's take a moment and let's look at just a few this morning. Just a few of the examples. Remember that God used Isaiah, uh, David, John, Paul, and others to use this type of imagery to convey God's character. In uh, Isaiah 49.15, God gives us this picture of a mother nursing in Isaiah. And it's this, it's this picture of a mother holding her child and comforting her and, and, and loving this child, feeding this child, giving this child life. And God says, okay, here's what I want you to see about this. In 49.15, it says, Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child that she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. This is God saying, look, come up with the best example you can come up with of love. Find this image of connection. Find this image of connection that cannot be broken. And understand that even that is fallible, but mine is not. Even this example that you couldn't possibly imagine that bond being broken, it's possible, my bond is not. My bond is not. This is my mother, and this is me as a little baby, and people always talk about, you know, I, I obviously didn't get the um, basketball gene in my family. However, as a baby, I did all right by myself. Um, and as you look, someone asked about that, and I keep trying to convince people, and I came across these pictures finally to get to show. Ladies, I, I had biceps for days, okay? I, I did all right. I was doing all right for quite a while. Um, and this is also what you get when you go through that with a mom. Um, all right, here's what I want you to see. Mothers, don't discount the time that you have with these kids. Don't discount the time. And, and I don't mean take it for granted necessarily. I mean that don't think that because you work or because you have lots of kids and everybody's busy and their schedule's crazy and you're going everywhere and you're moving and you're doing things, or that your kids are older and so they're not as home as much, or your kids are older and they've moved out and moved on, or there's a riff, or whatever it is, don't discount the influence that you have or think for a moment that that influence has stopped. What I want you to know, as many of you do, the mother in this picture, my mother, died almost 23 years ago. Almost 23 years ago. And what I can assure you is that your influence extends and lasts longer than you would ever believe or that that internal voice allows you to think about. Then in chapter 66 of Isaiah, still in Isaiah, chapter 66, verses 10 through 13, I want you to see this. God is addressing a broken people. His people, they are heartbroken. They are wounded. They are lost. They are completely and totally devastated at this time. God could use, call upon any imagery possible to try to come to his people at this moment. 
and, and a lot of them would seem natural. He could call upon imagery that he uses so often in other times. He could call upon imagery of the warrior, or the lion, or the judge. But this is what he uses. He says, rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All of you who love her, rejoice greatly with her. All of you who mourn with her, rejoice greatly as well. For you will nurse and be satisfied at her comforting breasts. You will drink deeply and delight in her overflowing abundance. For this is what the Lord says. I will extend peace to her like a river, and the wealth of nations like a flooding stream. You will nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. In their time of greatest distress, of fear, of doubt, of uncertainty, of pain, God chooses to describe his nurturing and his ability to comfort as a mother comforts her child. And when Jesus is addressing the Pharisees, in Jerusalem and the hypocrisy that is laid out there and and how they've they've kind of played on the people the people of Jerusalem and and there's there's this long history of this Jesus isn't the first one that this has happened there's a long history of prophets being sent to God's people in Jerusalem and just being chewed up and spit out and as Jesus is addressing them in, in Matthew 23 37 and also again verbatim in Luke 13 34 uh, Jesus says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a mother hen gathers her chicks under her wings. Moms, well, these are some great images. These are images that God uses, but these are the best hand-picked images how many of you, though, last week uh, or this morning on Mother's Day, which Mother's Day, all kids act right and treat you right, and nice and all that, right? Sleep in, all that good stuff. Trying to get to the church building this morning instead started off your day like this. Dads have dad. Yeah, we get a lot of hand waving in the back. Or this, when you start a morning like this, it often leads to the feelings of this. This is starting off the day. I, I find that this can also be described for me as starting off the school year in August and ending the school year in May. Um, uh, this was one of my favorites that I share with all new parents as my way of trying to be encouraging, as encouraging as possible. Um, these are things that moms deal with. This is one we've joked about a lot this week, how you pack your kid's lunch at the beginning and at the end. Jackie can attest to this, watching lunches all year at preschool. Or my favorite, because this is the one that I feel a lot, and I have, this, this week was, was kind of difficult. Last week and this week, they're two of my busiest weeks of the whole year with everything going on. But also, uh, writing a Mother's Day sermon for me, uh, which... I knew it was important and I knew I could do proved to be a lot harder than I thought it would be going through these things. Um, and so I have days like this. I just, I just can't. Uh, moms, here, here, this is what I want you to know. Mothering is hard. Mothering is hard. It's kind of like the people who you have newlyweds and people come up to them and they say, oh, that first year is just the best year ever. You are lying. You are lying. No, if the first year is the best year ever, stop. Just quit now. It gets better, I promise. Mothering's the same way. They bring home the little baby and they're like, oh, those first six weeks are the... No, 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 they're not. It's not fair. Guys, mothering is hard. Mothering is hard. Kids' stock... We, Aaron and I joke about kids have stock prices, right? It can go up and down very quickly. Hour by hour, sometimes minute by minute, stock prices are coming and falling. Your husband's stock price can fall to zero, but you still aren't allowed to sell. It's a rough gig. I get it. But listen, the large things at that time are all the time, and then when that happens, all the small things all of a sudden feel like large things. 
You're overwhelmed, you're exhausted, you're overworked. Bathing is that thing that you used to do before you were bathing little ones instead. Like, it, it's, it's just hard. But here's the, here's the deal. You give, you trade, you work, you fail, you succeed. But even when you succeed, you're still so hung up on what you thought was a fail that you don't even enjoy the success that you just had. Everyone else looks on and thinks, man, I want to be a mom like that, or I wish I had a mom like that, or my goodness, I can't wait to have that kid in youth group because I see the mom they have. While that mom is thinking, I'm a failure, I can't do this, I'm not enough. Here's the deal. Let me be one of the ones to tell you today that Mothers, you are amazing, and you are doing an unbelievably important, unfathomably important and fantastic job that no one else can do. Nobody else can do. And know that as you love your child, as you clothe your child, as you feed your child, you discipline your child, as you care for your child, as you guard and protect that child, and as you want to defend your child, Recognize that you are seeing, feeling, and exhibiting the characteristics of God. The image of God. Because just as God chose to use images throughout Scripture uh, of, of birthing, of nursing, of cuddling, comforting, protecting, defending, mothering to describe His character and His image the world when the world sees you love when you shouldn't when the world sees you sacrifice when you don't have anything else to sacrifice when the world when, when everyone in every magazine and every news source is crying and telling you to do you and you're still taking care of everyone else first and when the world sees you relentlessly chase and unconditionally love that child that everyone else has given up on and tells you that it's understandable that you give up on them too you are showing the world the very nature of God in a way that nobody else can do nobody else can do it is it is a window to heaven to see a glimpse of the character of God for the world to see through mothers. So what you need to know this morning, moms, is that you are, you are doing a job that is, a, a role that is irreplaceable, and you are doing a fantastic job. I see it, other moms see it, Everyone sees it. The kids see it. And you're doing a job that shows God to anyone and everyone who sees you. Guys, how a mother unconditionally loves a child, you can't get a better example of how Jesus loves and chases. So this morning we have an opportunity. As the sermon, the sermon is done, uh, and we have an opportunity this morning because here's what I want you to know. I don't know what you've been told about God or how you grew up thinking about God or if this is the first time you've ever stepped into a building full of people, uh, of God's people, or have had conversations like this. But hear me out. God uses these examples and these images to describe himself. God is a God who comforts like a mother comforts a child who nurtures like a mother feeds her child, who chases relentlessly, unconditionally after his children, no matter what, like a mother does her child. And we all have the gift and opportunity to be loved by that, that type of God, a God with that character and that image. And understand that I know that not everybody had or has a mother that fits that description. I, I get that. Not everybody has a parent that fits that bill. But you have a gift to have a God who loves you in that way and fills that spot and takes that void perfectly, always, 
and forever. And this morning, if you need to be comforted by a God who comforts as a mother comforts a child, you have the opportunity this morning to come. Receive that comfort. Receive God or receive prayer from those that love you and try to love in the same way.